Hello all, in this video session we will be discussing about different questions of the MCQ that we conducted on structure, union and storage classes. Okay, so our first question was consider the following C declaration. Assume that objects of the type short is having 2 bytes, float is having 4 bytes and double is having 8 bytes. And what is will be the memory requirement for variable t ignoring alignment considerations? Okay, so we have a structure and it has two members one is short and other is union, which is having member float and double. So we know structure is usually the uh, sum of size of the members present in it. Okay, so here we are ignoring the alignment consideration, so it will be the sum of the members of the structure. Okay. So when we consider a union, here the size will be the maximum size of its members. Okay. So here you will be having the maximum size between float and double that will be 8 bytes and short SO5 will be having 2 into 5 that is 10 bytes. So we can say that uh, this, this will be taking 10 bytes and this will be taking 8 bytes so we will be having an answer that is 18 bytes okay now the second question is what will be the output of the following program and this is our program and uh, so here in the main and then a structure is declared and then we have defined a structure site and then after that we are declaring variable for that and then printing the value inside the members of the structure okay so here one thing you have to remember is that whenever we are defining a structure we are only defining a data type so we cannot assign values to its members okay so here we are only defining the structure variable so we cannot assign value we can only assign value after creating variables of this particular data type that is site okay after creating variable memory will be allocated for that particular structure then only we can assign values that's why giving something like this when we are defining structure will give compile time error okay so we have to remember that okay now the next question is uh, what is the keyword used for defining a structure okay so it's a very simple question and the answer is struct with every letter in small case okay small case or lower case now the fourth question is what is or are the operators used to access members of a structure variable so if we have a structure variable then we can use dot operator to access its members now consider that we have a pointer pointing to a structure variable then we can access the members of the structure variable using the points to operator okay so if we have p pointing to the structure variable then we can use p points to the member of the variable to access the member of that particular structure variable okay so this and this are both right so we can say both a and b okay now the next question is what will be the output of the following program so this is our program okay okay so this is our program and if we consider this program we have a structure st having members x and a pointer which is capable of pointing to structure variable of type struct st okay and then after that we have int main and then we have declared a variable for variable of type st that is temp okay so memory will be allocated for temp and then temp will have the members x and next so consider that is allocated at address 400 so at 400 it will be having the x memory for x will be allocated at that particular address and memory for next will be allocated at 404 okay so i'm just assuming that x will be having 4 bytes and next that is a point will be having 8 bytes okay next when this temp.x equal to 10 is executed the value of this structure member x becomes 10 okay and after that when i give temp.next equal to ampersand temp then the address of temp will be stored in this pointer variable or pointer member variable next okay so after executing this statement the value here becomes 400 okay so 400 is the initial value of the variable temp then after that i'm going to print 
tem dot next points to x. So tem dot next means the member that is inside temp, which is called next. Okay. So tem dot next will be this that is 400. Then 400 points to x means if it is a address of a structure, then address of a structure points to a member name will print the value of that particular member. So since it is address, 400 points to x means this is the address. So this points to x means it will be printing the value inside the member x. Okay. So the output will be 10. Okay. Okay, so the answer here is 10. Okay. Now the next question is among structure and union which occupies less memory when they have the same members. Okay. So when we consider structure, each member will be having their own storage, but in the case of union, it will be allocating the memory taken by the largest type. Okay. So the union will be occupying less memory. Okay. So that is the answer. And how can you declare a variable s for structure student? So this is one way to do it, struct student. Then we have defined this structure, and after that, the variable s is written, and then we can give semicolon. That is one way of declaring structure variable. Other way is just giving struct student, then the structure variable name. Okay, so those this a and b are correct, so we can give both a and b. Okay. So the next question is which of the following cannot be a structure member? Array can be a structure member, another structure can be a structure member, long can be a structure member, so function cannot be a structure member. Okay. And now the next question is what will be the output of the following program? So this is our program. So we have a structure named hotel. It has members, items and name. It has a structure variable A. So we are performing string copy a dot name comma taj. So the taj will be stored inside this a dot name. Okay. So it will be stored in the member name of structure variable a. And then 10 will be stored at the member items of a. Okay. So here print of statement we have given percentages and a dot name. So since this taj is stored in a dot name, this taj will be Printed. Okay, so here it was all in upper cases, so we'll be getting output in all in upper cases. Okay, so this will be our answer. Okay, and in the following segment of C code complex is a data type variable literal or keyword. Okay, so this is actually we are defining a new data type called complex. Okay, so structure help us to define our own data types. So this is a data type. Okay. Next one. Which of the following is not described by the storage class of a variable? Okay. It defines scope. Then it defines lifetime. It defines location. That is in which part of the memory it will be stored. And when we consider data type, it doesn't say anything about data type. Okay. So storage classes doesn't describe about data type. So which among the following is not a storage class? Okay, auto is a storage class, registry is a storage class, static is a storage class, extend is a storage class, whereas int is not a storage class. Okay. And what is the default value of static variable? Okay, the default value of static variables and global variables are zero. Okay. Then the default value of local variables. Okay. So our local or we can say automatic variables are garbage value okay so this is the default value of local variables or auto variables what is the lifetime and scope of local static variable okay so the lifetime of any static variable is entire program then since it is a local static variable its scope will be local scope so the right answer is entire program and local scope now what is the storage class of n in the following program okay so we have in n equal to 20 Okay, so in this program, since we are defining the variable inside the block, it is by default it is in auto storage class. Okay, then what will be the output of the following code? Okay, so we will just inspect this code in detail. Okay, so this is a program, so it has two functions. First function is fun, which is having a static variable i. Then second function is show which is having an auto variable j. 
then we have main okay so we will just start from the execution so when the program execution starts uh, it will be coming to here the control will be coming to here and for that the memory will be allocated for all static variables and global variables so first of all memory will be allocated for i assume that it is stored at address 400 and it is initially having the value 1 and then control comes in main then the show function is called so control will come here and then after that memory will be allocated for j and initially value 1 will be stored in j assume that it is stored at location 600 then j is incremental thus making js2 then after that we will be printing inside show percentage d inside percentage d will be replaced by 2 so it will output inside show colon 2 okay so after that once this function finishes the control comes back to here the memory here will be deallocated and control comes to here and fun, fun function is called and control comes here and this is already allocated so we will be not be executing this anymore and i will be incremented by 1 thus making is2 and this statement is printed inside fun 2 will be printed okay again the control will be coming from here to here here this memory won't be deallocated since it is a static variable its lifetime is entire program okay so again this show function is executed and the same thing happens control comes here memory will be allocated for j assume that this time this j is allocated memory 500 it is initially having value 1 the statement executes and value of j becomes 2 then this is executed which will print inside show okay then once the function finishes this memory will be deallocated and control will come to here and again this font function is called so control will come here the statement will be skipped and then okay this will be only considered initially okay that is before the program execution starts the statement will be considered after that this statement won't be considered okay so again here i plus plus which means i will be incremented by one thus making it three then the statement is executed printing inside font 3 okay so it will print inside font 3 okay so then after that the control will come here and when all is finished this memory all memory will be deallocated okay so our output will be inside show 2 inside font 2 inside show 2 and inside font 3 so the result will be 2 2 2 3 okay Okay, so result is 2, 2, 2, 3. So this option is the right answer. Okay. Okay, now in case of a conflict between names of a local and global variable, what happens? Okay, so whenever there is a local variable and global variable inside a block, the local variable will be given the priority or it will only consider the local variable. Okay. Now you have this program, what will be the output of the following program? Okay, so this is the program. We have the main. So program execution starts from main. And if there are any static or global variables, then memory will be allocated for those variables and then it is initialized with the given value. For example, a CH is a character variable which is a static storage class. So memory will be allocated for that. And uh, Okay, all the addresses that I am representing here are just assumptions, so just keep that in mind. Then once the execution starts, then we have a register in the equal to 2. Consider that our register space are free, memory will be allocated for i and register and value 2 will be stored there. Then we have declared for cloud j, that is automatic, so it will be allocated on memory and since we are not initializing with any value it will be having some garbage value then we have int k so memory will be allocated for k as well okay then after that we have the statement k equal to plus plus ch and i so this statement will increment the value of ch so ch is actually of character type so this a will be incremented by one thus making it b then b and i okay so the ascii code of b is uh, if we convert it into an integer it will be 66 so 66 and 2 will give 1 okay so this 66 whenever we are performing and operation if any one of the 
operand is 0 then only the result will be 0 otherwise the result will be 1 so in this case value of k becomes 1 ok so again the next statement k is equal to plus plus ch so ch is incremented thus making ch as c that is ASCII value is 67 so when it is stored in k in k it will be interpreted as 67 ok then after that we have the statement j is equal to i minus minus plus 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 k into 2 so here i minus minus so it will be first using and then decrementing the value of i so here 2 will be taken plus then plus plus k that will increment the value of k by 1 thus making k as 68 so 68 into 2 will give 136 then 136 plus 2 will give 138 which will be stored in j so this becomes 138 again i have just shown 138 but since it is a floating point number there will be space for storing the fraction part as well okay so this will be represented as 138.000000 inside this memory okay so this i minus minus we used i now we have to decrement the value of i thus making value of i as 1 okay then after that printf value of k and j so value of k is 68 and j is 138 since it is floating point number it will be 138.00000 okay. so this will be our output 68 and 138 okay okay so 68 and 138 will be our answer okay and now finally consider the following two files in a C project what will be the output of the programs okay so here we have two programs so this is actually a variable declared in file p.c and this is a, the program written inside main.c and we have given extra in p so it will be considering this p and here sum is given as 5 and uh, here the execution starts from here so p is equal to bomb is called control comes here okay initially value of sum is equal to 5 and sum is incremented thus making it a 6 then return 6 so it will return 6 and this will be stored in p so when we print this sum and p sum is a global variable so it is changed to 6 and the value at p is 6 so here the output will be 6 comma 6 okay so the code gives an output 6 comma 6 okay so these are the questions that we had in our mcq just go through it and if you have any doubt you can ask okay thank you